Vice Chancellor of the University of Cape Town, uh, Dr. Price, our honored guest, Professor Alice Walker, the faculty and staff of the university, the trustees of the Steve Biko Foundation, Mr. Arnold, Mrs. Biko, Dr. Huapa, Mr. Mkabela, Dr. Rampele, and Ms. Sabota, the student leadership and the SLC president, patrons of the Steve Biko Memorial uh, Lecture, and those, of course, who join us as usual via the broadcasts on radio and television, both live and delayed broadcasts in 47 countries on the continent. Comrades and friends, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I am pleased as always to welcome you to the 11th Steve Biko Memorial Lecture. Welcome and good evening. Molweni, Sanibonani, Abshen, Huyenan. I was reminding a different group in Pretoria of people who had gathered to witness the readings uh, by Professor Alice Walker at a night titled An Evening with Alice Walker that the challenge of 11 languages is that you will sooner run out of airtime than you will out of pleasantries. And so in mitigation, my habit is simply now to skip to the 12th language and say Ayoba. <laughs> now, as if that was not enough, someone saw it wise to throw in Ayoba one more time. <laughs> As our patrons, you know that this lecture is indeed one of the oldest lectures in the New South Africa. The Steve Eagle Foundation is very grateful to all of you who have become regular faces who travel with us on this journey. And tonight, we are even more grateful that after traveling the continent, we leap for the first time into the diaspora to bring the second woman speaker, the talented Professor Alice Walker. Prior speakers of the lecture, of course, have included Professor Njabulon Debele on that very cold night in the year 2000, Professor Zeik Simda in 2001, Professor Chino Achebe in 2002, in 2003, Ngugi Yongo, and then we moved from the Writers' Series to Humanists and had President Mandela in 2004, Archbishop Emeritus Desmond Tutu in 2005, Dr. Mampele Rampele in 2006, and then came the political voices, President Mbeki in 2007, and of course the credit crunch hit, and we had Trevor Manuel in 2008. <laughs> uh, not in that order. <laughs> and uh, Governor Tito Mbowen in 2009. Um, all of these lectures have been compiled into a publication titled the Steve Biko Memorial Lecture Series, and that is available uh, on sale tonight, otherwise on the website of the Steve Biko Foundation, www.sbf.org.za. Now, we chose UCT for one reason. Those who have followed the youth program called Generation you have a number of choices, and then you have the one choice when the youth shout and say, obvious. It was the obvious institution and home for this lecture. <laughs> so having walked that path, we return now in the second decade uh, to Professor Alice Walker, a writer, having gone, of course, full circle. The Steve Biko Memorial Lecture is part of a larger series that falls under the Steve Biko Foundation's dialogue program. And consistent with the work of the foundation, the dialogue series attempts to use the intangible aspects of development in order to promote the link between citizenship and social action, between the story of the individual and that of society, between biography and history. According to this relationship, in living out our lives, we paint an image of the communities from whence we come. Our lives are inextricably linked to those communities. And perhaps few concepts, African concepts at least, 
explain this relationship uh, quite like the concept of wellness. My favorite quote is that of Robert Sobukwe, who would insist that when you don't have time, you don't ask an African how they are doing. And this is so because you are bombarded with a rather generous account of the weather, performance of the field, the cattle, family, who died, who was born. <laughs> and in many African languages, when one gives an account of one's wellness, it's normally with immediate reference to the collective. So in Isikosa, for example, the conversation will start with unjani, otherwise ninjani. And the response will almost always be in the plural, siapila. In Setswana, Riteng, uh, my wife is teaching me Tsonga, Yimfukil, and various other uh, uh, plural narratives. Sobukwe in the African uh, languages teaches that wellness is a process that starts from the outside and ends with us. And this philosophy dictates that my world and my community is at the center or are the center of my well-being. It's for this reason that we should take, I think, many of the threats to wellness of our societies very, very seriously. It's a personal matter and one which we can ill afford to respond to with indifference. So we cannot be well when our workers are paid a pittance. Our health, though, is equally dependent on the choices that they exercise in asserting the right to strike. We cannot do this in a manner that assaults a higher right, the right to life. We cannot be well when the media ombudsman finds 60% of the time against the media for unprofessional journalism. But our health is even weaker when we prescribe a media tribunal as the remedy to in a democratic uh, society. We are certainly not well when we do nothing against the deterioration of our well-being, when we become disengaged citizens. Few writers have examined the wellness of the soul, quite like Professor Alice Walker. And she writes about many of these themes, including justice, sexuality, love, activism. And one of my mo most favorite themes, of course, for which she is uh, very well known, is that of the image of the woman. She is strongly associated with womanism, which she describes as distinct from feminism. With consistency and dependability, she has taken us on many a journey on the trials and tribulations of the woman, and only to rescue the image from entrapment and victimhood, releasing it to flirt with triumph over adversity. In her most seminal work, The Color Purple, set in the deep American South, between the wars, she, represents, uh, she presents us with uh, Sally, a young black born into poverty and segregation. Raped repeatedly by the man she calls her father, she is separated from two children, and then entrapped by the husband who treats her no better than a slave. But then she meets the glamorous Miss Avery, singer and the magic maker, a woman who has taken charge of her own destiny. And gradually, Sally discovers the power and joy of her own spirit, freeing her from the past and reuniting her with those she loves. Uh, one of the critics, uh, Benjamin Zafania, says of this book, if you are not touched, you can't ever be touched. In a short story titled The Happy Mother in the book The Meridian, she rescues the image of the woman from being what she calls a mindless body, a sex creature, something to hang false hair and nails on. Further to this, she has 26 titles under, under her belt, featuring fiction, poetry, and essays, and many of these carry various themes, such as I've outlined above. And she's one of the most celebrated authors, having sold more than 10 million copies. It's therefore fitting that tonight we are led by Professor Walker in what she refers to as a conversation and not a lecture, and the title of which is Been Coming to See You Since I Was Five, Reflections of an American, uh, American Poet uh, Connection to the South African Soul. 
This is for me a fulfillment of a dream deferred, a dream that started with a conversation 10 years ago at Professor Walker's home. So Professor Walker, I am responsible at least for the delay of the last uh, decade in making this possible. <laughs> Professor Walker, we are humbled as the Steve Biko Foundation and our partners at the University of Cape Town to have you give the 11th Steve Biko Memorial Lecture. Thank you.